everybody. Thank you for stopping by to visit the channel for this upcoming unbiased game preview. If you want to stay updated with the latest highlights or game previews, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and select all so you won't miss another video. In this matchup, we're going to the big house for a top 15 matchup with 12th ranked Michigan and 15th ranked Wisconsin in a position battle in the Big Ten standings. As we look at the tail of the tape of advanced metrics, the only significant advantage goes to Michigan when they have the ball on offense due to their 25th offensive S&P Plus ranking versus Wisconsin's 55th defensive S&P Plus ranking. The matchup, however, is going to be the Michigan defense versus the Wisconsin offense. S&P Plus gives Michigan a 7.4 point advantage if the game was played on a neutral site and they open up the game as a touchdown favorite. Michigan started off their season stumbling out of the gate against Notre Dame on the road. They couldn't get anything going offensively, and in fact they averaged a measly 4.45 yards per play and 17 points. Fast forward from that debacle and they have been close to lights out with the exception of their game against Northwestern. They've been averaging 42.4 points a game. Quarterback Shea Patterson came from Ole Miss and he had high expectations as soon as he arrived on campus, and he has been a significant upgrade from the quarterback carousel from last year completing 68.8% of his passes at 8.6 yards per attempt. The knock on him was his accuracy coming from the SEC when he completed less than 50% of his passes against elite defenses. He doesn't have to do it alone because Karan Higdon has been solid in the running game, averaging close to 6 yards per carry and 116 yards per game. Wisconsin came into the season returning over 50% of their tackles, interceptions, sacks, and tackles for loss. They returned a senior latent group that didn't have a ton of playing experience and experience depth behind them. TJ Edwards is their best player on that side of the ball who was a Buckus Award finalist in 2017 and they can't afford to lose him. If there is a sore spot on this group is that they have had a ton of attrition in the secondary this season. They can't afford to lose Dakota Dixon for this game, who is their leader in the secondary. He's also questionable for this game, and they're already without Scott Nelson for a half due to a targeting penalty against Nebraska. Against the Huskers, they gave up 407 yards passing, and if they're going to give the Badgers a puncher's chance to stay in this game, they must play lights out against Michigan's passing attack. Jonathan Taylor is not having a sophomore slump. In fact, he's averaging 169 yards per game at 6.74 yards per carry. He has been their entire offense, which is ranked 8th in offensive S&P Plus and 4th in rushing yards per game, averaging 287 yards per game. The Heisman candidate found his groove in the previous game against Nebraska, rushing for 221 yards at 9.21 yards per carry, also three touchdowns after being held out of the end zone in his previous two games. He is running behind a powerful and experienced offensive line that is about as good as it gets. They led the charge against Iowa's 8th ranked defensive S&P Plus unit as their offense averaged 6.29 yards per play, which has been the most success any offense had on Iowa so far this year. Now, a lot of people are going to ask why Wisconsin is rated so high on offensive S&P Plus is because the metric is not about scoring points, but it rewards efficiency and Wisconsin doesn't beat themselves offensively. In fact, they have had a success rate of over 50% in every win this year. Michigan has been excellent on defense for the last three years, and this year is no different. They are number one in three defensive categories, passing defense, defensive yards per play, and total defense. In fact, they are giving up 63% of their opponent's rushing averages and 73% of their opponent's passing average. This bunch is elite, with dudes such as linebacker Devin Bush and defensive lineman Rashawn Gary who is playing up to his five-star billing. Defensive lineman Chase Winovich is not shabby in his own right, leading the team in tackles for loss with 10.5 and, and sacks with 3. As far as Wisconsin, if they're going to win this game, they have to stay ahead of the chains. They cannot put themselves behind the chains against Michigan's stout defense. If that happens, that will lead to poor field position and the Wolverines will get into a feeding frenzy. Alex Hornibrook will have to be lights out in this one. For Michigan, they have to attack the Wisconsin secondary early. They need to test their depth, especially if Dixon is unable to go. Donovan Peoples-Jones leads the team in touchdown receptions with five for the year, and he will be another test for Wisconsin secondary. For the computer projection, Michigan averages 38.2 points a game and they score 118% of what their opponents usually allow. Wisconsin allows 16.4 points a game and they allow 70% of their opponent's scoring average. That puts Michigan between 19 and 26 points, which gives them right in the middle at 23. 
Wisconsin averages 33.8 points a game and they score 123% of what their opponents usually allow. Michigan allows 15.8 a game and they allow a salty 60% of their opponent's scoring average. And that puts Wisconsin between 19 and 20 and that puts them right at 20 points. And also that's why the score is 23 to 20 in favor of Michigan for the computer projection. I think this matchup is going to be a standard, old school, physical Big Ten game. I am salivating at the matchup between Wisconsin's offensive line versus Michigan's defensive line. Whoever wins this battle between the trenches will end up winning this one in my opinion. I'm picking Michigan in this one because I think they have a little bit more balance on offense and I have concerns about Wisconsin's health on defense with all their injuries. I understand for them it's going to be the next man up and they're not going to lay down in this one, but I don't think they have enough in the end for this one. So I have Michigan winning this one to the tune of 24 to 17. And that's all I got for this game preview. Let me know what your thoughts are on the game in the comment section below. Also, give me your score prediction and tell me why your respective team is going to win the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. All I ask is that you give the video a like. And if you love college football as much as I do, hit the subscribe button if you want to stay updated with the latest previews and the occasional highlights. Till next time.